So I've decided to splash out like a madman on another Pagani design. What am I doing? But there's a method to my madness because I wanted to see if they could do a decent homage to something different for a change. It's not a Seiko. It is actually paying homage to a Grand Seiko. Ooh. This is the one that it's paying homage to and that costs loads of money. I can't afford to buy one of those. If I was to buy a Grand Seiko, I'll buy something more like this one because I just prefer that kind of watch from Grand Seiko. So why did I buy this watch? So stats and specs, this is what I always try and do first. I hope you enjoyed this bit and uh, introducing this segment will be my good friends, Guy Pass and Minch. Now we're going to move on to me analyzing the watch. So the first thing I actually need to just test is, is this bezel action any good? Please be good. Please be good. Now I'm going to get it off here and just get straight involved with the first thing I'd like to discuss with you guys is the things I've taken issue with. 130 pounds in the sale ish, 140 to 150 in normal pricing. $180, for example, is what I paid. My argument is it's still too expensive for a Pagani design watch because in past experience, watches with very similar build quality to this cost a lot less. And that was even after they brought in the paying the VAT and taxes, etc., which definitely bumped the prices up for say a 70 pound watch would be nearer to hundred. So this still is a bit too much. There's a few quality control issues with this piece. The first one, pop a macro up, it's easy to show you, but there is a spec on the dial around here and I don't like specs on dials. It just bugs me. It just shows that there's just not been the cleanest environment. It does bug me a bit, but that's a personal thing. What do you guys think? What do you find, does it really bug you if you find a spec on the dial or under the glass underneath? For me, it's a bit of a deal breaker, but that's, again, it's personal taste. The end links, I'll talk about the positives in a bit later on, but they are quite poor. There's a gap here. Again, I'll pop up macros, but there's a large gap there. It's about one to two millimeters and it's tight there. And it's exactly the same the other side. See there? And then as well on the underside to show how poorly fitting they are, but where this spring bar goes into the lug, it's so bent for that they've really had to jam it in just to get it to fit properly. I'm scared to take this bracelet off because I think this would be an absolute pig to get back on because that is so badly bent. You don't really notice it when you're wearing it, but it's still annoying that it's there and then they're so poorly fitting. And lastly, the deal breaker for me. This is a dive star watch with a claimed 200 meters water resistance. Loom is important. The worst loom they've actually got on it is the most crucial part, apart from the pip maybe, is the hands. It's woeful. It's that bad. It's within four minutes, you see my time lapse come up, it's gone. The hands are illegible. It's that bad. This really shocking. Why can't they get it right? Just get the hands right at least. Come on, especially at this price. Steel Dive can do it. I've got a 40 quid uh, Addis Dive quartz watch that's better than this. Why are they so bad? What if you were a bit of a recreational diver and you wanted to use a budget watch in combination with your dive computer, just to have something nostalgic, a bit of old fashioned charm going down to the depths with you, something mechanical you could use as a diving tool to work in conjunction with modern tech. You're going to go down with your Pagani design and you're going to rely on the luminosity of the hands and the loom pip. It'd be an epic fail. Whoever puts loom on these hands needs another job. Then moving on before I get too cross, the weight is, even with its links taken out to size up to me, I took about three links out, it still weighs 166 grams. Uh, so last criticism is actually about Pagani design as a brand. I think they're getting a, a bit lazy in terms of the speed in which they get watches out. They're not thinking a bit more about these last little details because they're great at getting watches out. Almost any watch that you can think of that's been released, that's really popular, they will release a version of it in multitude of dial variations and colors and it's with or without a bracelet it's just endless the choice is ridiculous and i think is it better to have lots of choice maybe yes because they sell by the bazillion or is it better to refine the choices down a little bit and get the choices that they release just done 
to an even better standard to align a little bit more with the prices that they're charging. But even though I've poo-pooed this quite considerably, the list for dislikes is actually quite short, but they are, there are deal breakers, as I've mentioned, the loom and those end links. Sometimes you can have one bad thing and that's enough for you to be cross with the watch. But the positives are great. Styling. They haven't done anything to do with the styling. They've just cut and pasted it from Grand Seiko and done a few little tweaks. I think it's a great looking watch. I like the position of the crown. I like the design of the bezel, how chunky it is. And I like the very nice angular edges. And for me, the highlight of these really steeply sloping down male end links that go down like that. Really nice. And they just look really attractive, nice and chunky. And it complements the angular edges of these lugs as well. I just think that is really nice. And that's the main thing that drew me in. It's like this bit here, the watch, drew me in. Is the bezel feel any good? Please be good. Please be good. The answer is yes, 120 clicks. Light, but not too light. No sloppiness. You feel every click, very consistent. Literally, one of the best bezel actions I've felt on a Pagani design. And guess what? It's not far off the quality of my Oris, which has a slightly deeper and richer sound to it. This is really good. Lighter does have a slightly different, obviously, tone to it compared to an, an Oris, for example, but every watch is different. But on my watch, this bezel action is great. I'm so impressed. Well done, Pagani. And it lines up spot on. Another huge positive. I've already mentioned the end link designs, but that complements the next positive, which is the wearability. It wears so well, very comfortable. It does, even though it's a heavy watch, 160 grams, size to me, the weight distribution seems really good. And I really want to compliment their clasp on this one. They've done a great job. Positive action, click straight in, really nice build quality, no sharp edges. Well, those were real problems with some of their other models they released. Uh, I actually scratched my son once, not on purpose, don't call social services, on the clasp of one of my Begani designs. And that's obviously going to sour your relationship and your image of build quality and finishing. Maybe I should stop wearing these kind of watches when I'm handling my child. But this is child friendly, child safe. No harm was done to any children whilst wearing this watch. Personal taste, I like the green dial and the bezel. They work together really well. It plays with the light beautifully. Sunburst green, lovely, glossy ceramic bezel insert. It's just a gorgeous colorway for me. But if you don't like this, there are others as well. You know, you can go for black or this blue. Really nice. Of course, usual positives you get with a uh, Pagani design. Sapphire crystal, ceramic, everything solid. Screw pins, which work really well, actually. Came in and out really well. No problems there. Milled clasp. Everything fits and works together really well. Uh, 200 meters water resist and a, an H35, which is running pretty well. So no complaints there. And I like how neatly framed this date window is. Fits in there perfectly, very neatly done. And all the angular designs and the brushing that moves on to the next thing. The, the fit and finish is actually, apart from those end links, is great. And that's why I'm a bit frustrated. That speck of dust, those end links, but the brushing and the polishing has been done really well. Crisp transition between brushing and polishing there. It's just really lovely. The, again, the brushing on the bracelet, no sharp edges anywhere. It's a, it is a step up in some, some areas, but then it, it's, that's why it makes it more of a crushing blow when they get it wrong. And moving on, the crown, really nice. Seven mil, great grip. No, no crown guards in the way. Lovely pop when you undo it. The usual NH35 screw in action and feel, really good. Easy to operate. Even with gloves on, it's easy to screw that back in. They've done so much right, but they've really let it down with these few issues. So... You've seen it now. It's got pros and it's got cons. For me, the cons are on the cusp of ruining this watch for me. But for some reason, I've worn this watch loads and I obviously enjoy it. So I don't think the fatigue has quite set into its full effect. So there is still some enjoyment to be had from these watches. Aesthetically, I think it's great. Specification, yes, it's good. But there's a few quality control issues which do annoy me now, especially at the price that I paid for it. I'm getting a bit cross with this. Sort it out.